Hello and welcome to this session on fractions brought to you by Concept Guru. Now let's start by doing something that we all like, counting stars. How many stars do you see in this picture? Right, there are nine. Now, how many stars are green? You got that right too. There are three green stars. Now, if I ask you, what fraction of stars are green? Hmm. Let's write it this way. Number of green stars, which is three, and number of stars, that is nine. So, in total, we have nine stars. Of them, three are green. So, three upon nine is the number of green stars or the fraction of green stars. Voila, we have our first fraction. Now, where else have we heard about fractions in our day-to-day -day life? The teacher says, half of the class is going to the school picnic. Sam ate a quarter of the pizza. The battery is fully charged. Well, although it is full, it is still a fraction because it is whole. It is a whole number. Now, in this video, we are going to talk about fractions as part of a whole or one. We are going to talk about the numerator and denominator of a fraction. What are equivalent fractions? Comparison of fractions. So, let's start by looking at this circle. This circle is divided into two equal parts. The shaded part is one half of the circle. The white part is also one half of the circle. Together, both the parts make up the whole circle. Each part is one half of the whole. We express one half as one and then we give a line and then we write the 2 below it and we can call it as 1 by 2 or 1 over 2. Now here is another circle that is divided into three equal parts. The green part is one third of the circle, the red part is one third of the circle and the blue part is also one third of the circle. So together the three parts make up the whole circle. Each part is one third of the whole. Again, we can express one third as one and then we can give a, num a line and then write three below it or one by three or one over three. A fraction is written with two numbers arranged one over the other and separated by a line, just like we wrote one by two and one by three. So we can write a fraction like that. The number above the line is called the numerator and the number below the line is called the denominator. Well, let's quickly try to check how much we learnt. Can you write the fraction in which 10 is the numerator and 35 is the denominator? Well, you can pause the video and write it on a piece of paper. The answer is 10 by 35. Great job if you got that correct. Let's try another one. Can you write the fraction in which 6 is the numerator and 13 is the denominator? Yes, it is 6 by 13. Great job. Now let's talk about equivalent fractions. In each of the figures below, let us try to identify the fraction represented by the shaded portion. In the first one, it is one part is shaded out of two parts. So it is one over two. In the second one, we have two shaded portions over four portions in total. So it is two over four. In the third picture, it is three over six. In the fourth one, it is four over eight. And in the next one, it is five over ten. So we can write these portions or these fractions like this as 1 over 2 and then we have 1 into 2 by 2 into 2. So we can write 2 by 4 like this. Similarly, we can write 3 by 6 as 1 into 3 
by 2 into 3. And we can write 4 by 8 as 1 into 4 by 2 into 4. And then 5 by 10 as 1 into 5 by 2 into 5. So these fractions are called equivalent fractions because each of them are equal to half. Now, again, quiz time. Can you find the missing numbers in the equivalent fraction? So, 3 by 4 will be equivalent to this, the fraction on the right. Let's try it out. Yeah, the number is 12. If you got that right, great job. Now, here's how we did it. To get 16 in the denominator, we multiplied the denominator from the left by 4. So, we must also multiply the numerator on the left by 4. Great job once again. Let's try a different one. Can you find the missing number here? Yeah, it's 5. Great work again. Now, here's how we did it. To get 7 in the denominator, we divided 56 by 8. So, we must divide the numerator by 8 as well. Now, let's talk about comparison of fractions. Take four strips of the same length and divide each one of them into five equal parts. Now, shade one portion in the first one, two in the second, three in the third, and four in the fourth. So here are your fractions, 1 upon 5, 2 upon 5, 3 upon 5, and 4 upon 5. Now, as you can see, that 1 by 5 is less than 2 by 5, 2 by 5 is less than 3 by 5, and 3 by 5 is less than 4 by 5. So if we have two factors with the same denominator, the one having a smaller numerator is smaller than the other. Let's take another example. Now, if we take four strips of the same length and divide them into two parts, three parts, four parts, and five parts, and color one portion in each of these strips, so we can denote them as fractions 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4, and 1 by 5. Again, as we can see, that 1 by 5 is less than 1 by 4, and 1 by 4 is less than 1 by 3, and 1 by 3 is less than 1 by 2. So if we have two factors with the same numerator, the one having a smaller denominator is greater than the other. Let's quickly check our understanding. Now, which number is greater? Or if you can find out, what is the relation? Is 5 by 7 greater than 6 by 7? They have the same denominator. So we should compare the numerators. Yes, 5 is less than 6, so 5 by 7 is less than 6 by 7. Great work. Let's compare some more. 3 by 4 and 3 by 7. They have the same numerator, but different denominators. Exactly, 3 by 4 is greater than 3 by 7. Now, here are some useful tips for parents. Try to engage your child uh, in the reducing to the lowest terms in a fraction type of problems. You can also uh, help the child with factorization of a number starting with the smallest number. And you can also work on fractions in measurements like one-fourth, two-fifths of a kilometer, half bottle of milk, etc. Hope you liked the session. We would like to see you in our next video. Thank you.